Chapter 5, The IND Program, Government Hypocrisy, IND Program. Most American citizens would probably be surprised to learn that their own government has been both growing and distributing marijuana for decades. Yes, that's right. The same government who refuses to recognize marijuana as a medicine has been subsidizing a large marijuana grow in Oxford, Mississippi for the past 30 years. That place is called the Medicinal Plant Garden, located at the University of Mississippi, Oxford. The facility is used to study various applications of marijuana. For example, the scientists grow marijuana to test its genetic makeup, determine its potency, and to extract THC from plants they harvested. The Coy W. Waller Laboratory Complex is a closely monitored, highly secure facility which houses thousands of marijuana cigarettes and plants. In 2007, the university produced 880 pounds of marijuana for the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The complex also analyzes samples of seized marijuana by the Drug Enforcement Agency from all over the United States and sends it to various researchers who have been approved by the Food and Drug Administration to conduct studies on the plant. In addition to research, the marijuana grown at the facility is also sent to the Research Triangle Institute in North Carolina for use in what is known as the Compassionate Investigational New Drug Program. The program began back in 1976 when a man named Robert Randall was arrested for growing marijuana at his home forcing him to prove that the plants were necessary to help him fight off the deteriorating effects from glaucoma. Randall won his case, leading to the federal government allowing him marijuana under the authority of the Food and Drug Administration. The program flourished, and by the year 1992, 13 other patients were receiving marijuana from the U.S. federal government's subsidized grow in Mississippi. At its peak, the program had 35 total patients. During the HIV epidemic of the 1980s, hundreds of more applicants desperately tried to be added to the program. This led, however, to the eventual closing of the program to new applicants by the George H.W. Bush administration in the year 1992. Ironically, many argue that the closure of the program by the government during this time led directly to the formation of the medical cannabis movement in the United States and is highly responsible for the outbreak of medical marijuana dispensaries in the USA today. As of 2011, only four patients remain in the IND program. All four patients continue to receive their medication from the federal government and each serve on the board of directors for a group called Patients Out of Time, a Virginia-based nonprofit organization that provides education on marijuana as a medicine. To determine the long-term effects of marijuana, in the year 2001, these four remaining patients voluntarily underwent a series of laboratory tests and examinations in a study led by world-renowned cannabis researcher, Dr. Ethan Russo. The resulting study, known as the Chronic Cannabis Use Study, revealed no evidence of harm from years of heavy cannabis smoking, and each patient was determined to be in overall good health. One of the remaining patients, Mr. Irvin Rosenfeld, has written a book documenting his experience with his struggles to become a legal marijuana patient, titled My Medicine, How I Convinced the U.S. Government to Provide My Marijuana and Helped Launch a National Movement. Dr. David Allen, a retired cardiac surgeon who now works as a medical marijuana physician, discusses another of the remaining patients, Miss Elvie Musica of Florida, 
and the IND program. LV Musica is uh, one of the patients, uh, and uh, uh, she uses it for uh, glaucoma. And uh, uh, it has saved her eyesight over the years. And she has been receiving uh, this tin of uh, federally grown uh, medical marijuana from Oxford, Mississippi. And it's shipped to patients. Um, so they can have marijuana um, for their medicinal use and they receive uh, different amounts depending on their conditions. Government hypocrisy. Although it is clear that the U.S. government is aware of the fact that marijuana has medicinal qualities, it refuses to recognize it as such with its continuing classification of it as a Schedule I narcotic. In fact, in 2003, the U.S. government, as represented by the Department of Health and Human Services, was awarded a patent on cannabinoids as antioxidants and neuroprotectants, U.S. patent number 6630507. The patent states unequivocally that cannabinoids are useful in the prevention and treatment of a wide variety of diseases including stroke, trauma, and autoimmune disorders, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, and HIV-related dementia. Today, many people are asking why the U.S. government refuses to admit that marijuana is a medicine and reschedules it so it can be legally prescribed in any form, including plant and pill. Some believe that it is an attempt to monopolize the cannabis market. Others say it is a result of the need of the government to remain loyal to large financial backers, such as the alcohol, tobacco, and pharmaceutical industries. After all, these industries do spend millions of dollars each year lobbying to keep marijuana illegal.